Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. We're going to look at 20 mistakes players make when playing position in eight ball. First off, controlling the cue ball on the break. Now this is easier said than done because we actually did control the cue ball and the 11 and the 2 knocked it down to the end of the table. The next thing is doing table recon. So watch as I go to pick up the chalk. My eyes are on the table the entire time. I'm looking at every shot. I'm putting together a plan for this table. I notice that the 7 and the 15 are tied up. So everything that I do at this point is going to relate to getting in position on the 7 and 15. So here I'm playing the long way down as opposed to playing the easy 1. Now why do you do that? Because getting on the 1 from the 2 would be a lot more difficult than playing the two and getting on the one and using the one to get down here to take a crack at this problem shot. It's the exact same problem that players have when they have ball in hand. They take the easy shot as opposed to the shot that actually helps them run the rack. The next mistake that you might make is not moving into the line of the shot. You're gonna see that over and over again in this video where I'm moving into the line of the shot. I know I need to get on the 4 because it's connected to the 7, which is my problem situation. Hitting clusters too hard. If you notice, we just tap that cluster to get position on this shot. Now this is actually a mistake here. I'm going to play this with high left, but I should have gone off at of 3 rails and moved around for the 3 ball in the side pocket. So actually moving into the traffic when I could have gone around the traffic was a clear mistake. And now I have to make a tremendous back cut, play the three ball up in the corner. A lot of mid-level players depend on their shot making ability and as a, as a consequence, they have terrible position play. If you're playing on seven foot tables and you manage to run racks with bad position play, it's usually because you're depending on your shot making ability. Once you get on a nine foot table like this, that ability just goes out the window because shot making ability is is diluted once the table gets more difficult. So we managed to run out the solids even though I played the wrong position on that particular shot. Obvious problem that players have is not seeing the patterns. Also not playing the pattern. So here I see the pattern but I'm not playing the pattern. I am just running them off. Why? Because I know that with my control of the cue ball, I can get on each one of these shots. If you called them out in order, I could get on each one of the shots. So not being three shots ahead is a bad habit, but this is a high-level player mistake. We look at the table. We know, hey, whatever happens, I'm going to be able to get on the next ball. You should always be three balls ahead. Don't play zone. Don't play these shots just because, hey, I know I can move in line with that 10 ball anytime I want, which is what I'm going to do here. Players who fear using multi-rail position are going to have a problem because, once again, you can see how we move into the line of this 10 ball shot. I could have under or overshot it by as much as 3 feet and still have very good position on it. And here I'm just going to stun over to the rail, but this is another mistake. Allowing that ball to rest on the rail like this has made what should be a routine side pocket shot a lot more difficult. And we actually rattle this in. These are pretty tight side pockets and we just managed to get it in that pocket. Actually, we used a lot of body language <laughs> to get that in there. So we finish out the rack pretty easily considering we made a couple uh, major mistakes, I would say there. Not getting on that three in the side was a major mistake. So I'm going to run the rack again here, give you a shot by shot of how I played it, and it's going to come quick, guys. I think I ran that rack in, I don't know, four minutes or something. So we're going to be going through it in real time this time, and um, I'll tell you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Once again, we're going to shoot a stop shot on this two. Playing the one to get on the two is not as intelligent as playing the two to get on the one. I know that 
If I get onto one here, I've got a, a host of ideas to get on this four ball. The four ball is actually my key ball right now to get on the seven. And whether or not we bump that 10 ball, we're still gonna get on that four ball. You can see that was perfect position whether we hit the 10 or not. And then here, we got the perfect angle to hit this cluster. Now, when you're breaking up clusters, have a target. I wasn't aiming for the, the cluster at all. I was aiming for the seven ball. And we came off the stripe just a little bit more than the seven, but the seven ball was the important part as far as breaking up the cluster and making sure we had a shot. As we said earlier, that position, I, yeah, if I had that to do over again, I'd come around the table off of three rails and move in line with the three into the side pocket. But I make a really good shot here, outside English, which eliminates the cut and deuce throw and allows me to stay on the eight. You can see all the left hand spin on that shot. A shot that distance with English coming off the rail to get on the eight, probably one of the better shots you're gonna see. And then we just finished the rack. You guys know I like to run both sides of the rack because in the real world, guys miss their eight ball and then you have to run out. Now, with this side of the rack, I'm looking at the table and saying, I can run out just about in any order. But that doesn't mean you do it just because you can. But I shoot a draw shot here just to get into the traffic. I know that if I bring the cue ball to the middle of the table, anything I want to do down here, I can do. Now, this is an important shot because I get on the 12 ball. The reason I chose that ball to get on is because it's the closest to the rail and it also automatically puts me on the nine. So I am playing position to some extent, but a lot of this is zone. And one of the ways you can tell I'm playing zone instead of playing precise position on a lot of these shots is if you look at these three balls that are almost parallel to each other across the center of the table, there's no way I would do that if I was playing patterns. My patterns would look more like triangles as opposed to playing lines that are parallel across the center of the table, which just become difficult unless you can go back and forth from side to side. But this is also a good shot here. Not worried about making the shot, it's almost straight in. But I do hit it a little soft and don't get to pop it off the rail the way I would like to. Anytime your cue ball is headed towards the rail, guys, you have to think in terms of getting the ball off the rail. I coached a very high ranked player and the only thing I could find in his game that was a flaw was he left the cue ball on the rail a lot and it was life changing. All I told him was every shot that you're gonna be heading towards a rail, I want you to think to yourself, get off the rail. So I want you guys to think to yourself, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Hit me in the comments and let me know what you thought of the video and I hope this helped you and I'll talk to you soon.